Hi guys, Nada here and today I'll be taking a look at the GL65 Leopard, which is a mid-range gaming laptop from MSI. Now it's not the thinnest nor the lightest, it doesn't have crazy specs or a lot of RGB, it is just a typical gaming laptop that should just offer a lot of gaming performance for your money. Now, as always, you will have some different options and different prices depending on where you live in the world. Uh, my model here has a 6-core Intel Core i7 10750H and RTX 2060 Max-P, which is always nicer to see than the Max-Q version. It has 16 gigs of RAM, a 500 gig SSD, and a 120 hertz IPS panel. Now for this particular model, you will have to pay around 1500 euros here in the Netherlands or around $1300 in the US. So let's check it out and see how it performs and how it compares to other laptops I've tested so far. Let's go. This video is brought to you by iFixit and their ProTech Toolkit. The ProTec Toolkit has all the tools and accessories you need to repair your hardware, whether it's a PC, phone, tablet, console, and so on. It is made of great quality materials, and iFixit backs that claim up with a lifetime warranty. Get yours using the links in the description below. Now, I think the GL65 looks and feels like a mid-tier gaming laptop. It weighs 2.3 kilos and it is 27.5 millimeters thick, so it is definitely not the thinnest nor the lightest 15-inch laptop on the market, but it will still fit most bags and backpacks, and if you mostly use it at home, you won't really mind the size. It has a very old-school look to it, with those big vents and red details and red LEDs and the very visible Red Dragon logo on the back. Now, build quality is mid-tier as well. The chassis is mostly plastic with a thin sheet of metal on the top cover. It is decent enough overall. The hinges are sturdy. Uh, the panel shows barely any flex, but there is some flex in the keyboard. It is very sensitive to fingerprints as well, both on the outside as well as on the inside, so be prepared to clean it regularly. Now, this particular model has a red keyboard with red backlighting, but there are RGB models available as well, and this goes for both the GL65 and the GP65, which is pretty much identical, but with gray color on the inside instead of black. Now, the keyboard itself is really nice in use, the actuation feels good uh, both for typing and fast-paced gaming, and I absolutely love that they included a full-size numpad. There is a button for some turbo cooling on the top right, uh, and next to it there is another button that is supposed to open Dragon Center software. Just be careful not to turn off your laptop by accident. Now the touchpad is a bit basic, uh, it is a precision touchpad with a plastic surface. It's pretty accurate and not really sensitive to accidental wrist contact, and I personally like that they added dedicated buttons, but they are quite tough to press and they do have quite a bit of resistance to them, so it's fair to say that it is not as nice as some of the new extra-large glass pads that MSI is using for higher-end models, but it works just fine and gamers will use a mouse anyways. Now, there is one fast USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, three USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, a gigabit LAN, an HDMI port, a mini display port, separate audio and microphone jacks, and a fast SD card reader. Now, the only real thing missing here is Thunderbolt support. The position of some of those USB connections is not really that ideal. I mean, plugging anything other than a small dongle into those front right ports right here uh, will just be in the way of your mouse and you'll constantly bump into it while gaming. Now, putting them a tiny bit higher up or on the back of the laptop would have been much nicer, at least in my opinion. Now, let's talk CPU performance. Most GL65 and GP65 Leopards will ship with a 6-core Intel Core i7-10750H, like I have right here. It is a pretty fast CPU that does especially well in single-core performance. But in multi-core workloads, it does get beaten by the new AMD Ryzen CPUs, which can be found in cheaper alternatives. Still, it is more than fast enough for tasks like photo editing or 1080p video editing, and 4K editing is also possible if you let Adobe Premiere use your GPU instead. Now, the CPU definitely doesn't hold back games, and this is where this laptop just shines. It uses a proper 115-watt GeForce RTX 2060, and it is outperforming the other RTX 2060 laptops by a very nice margin, as most are limited to 80 or 90 watts. 
you have no problems playing big AAA titles at high settings or light games at very high frame rates. And if that's not enough, you can decide to pay a bit more for an RTX 2070 or even an RTX 2070 Super version instead. But I think an RTX 2060 does hit a nice balance between performance and price. Now, unfortunately, this 120 Hz display really is an entry level gaming panel with a roughly 25 millisecond response time and a very poor color reproduction. I measured only 54% sRGB color gamut. A lot of cheaper laptops are being criticized harshly for offering poor color performance, so it is really hard for me to accept this from a 1500 euro mid-tier laptop. It's going to be fine for casual gaming and office applications, but it's not great for competitive play or anything that requires any level of color accuracy. Now, even though some other results of the display aren't really that bad, uh, contrast is good for example and the brightness is fine for most users, they just don't stop this panel from being classified as poor. Now, according to MSI's own information, the 144Hz panel should also be a 25 millisecond panel with poor color gamut. However, Jared from Jared's Tech already tested the GL65 with a 144Hz display, which showed a 95% color gamut, around 5 millisecond response time, and around 400 nits of brightness, which is actually a great result. And this pretty much makes the 144Hz panel way more attractive than this 120Hz option I have here. Now, I'm gonna put a link to this article in the description down below. And even though I really highly doubt that there is anyone here that doesn't follow Jared already, I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel as well because his laptop content and his reviews are purely awesome. Now, when it comes to thermals, uh, MSI decided to push for performance rather than low temps and noise. And you can clearly see and hear that while gaming. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it keeps the CPU at an average 3.8 gigahertz uh, with the occasional boost to 4 gigahertz and at uh, around 91 degrees Celsius. Now the GPU runs at a comfortable 78 degrees, but with really high clock speeds actually. I mean, 1845 megahertz is great for a mobile RTX GPU, and it does get pretty noisy. Uh, 50 decibels is not extreme for a gaming laptop, but it is quite loud. You can play around with the performance profiles, but yet again, they're a bit confusing. Now, in a CPU-heavy game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, changing the profile in uh, MSI's Dragon Center software from Balance to Turbo doesn't really do much with uh, both modes actually showing a very similar results. Now changing it to silent mode uh, does cut down the noise by a lot, but the speed of the CPU and the GPU only by a bit, so it runs considerably warmer and causes the CPU to throttle, making silent mode pretty much unusable while gaming. Now while stressing the CPU only, there are more differences. In uh, balanced mode, the clock speed is at respectable 3.6 GHz with a comfortable 81 degrees average, and it is audible but not extremely noisy at 44.9 decibels. I would say those are very nice numbers overall. Now changing it to turbo mode pushes the CPU towards 4 GHz, causing it to run at 95 degrees average, and again, occasionally throttling. Now, since you really don't want your CPU to throttle, I think that MSI software devs really need to sit down and take some time to tweak some of these profiles, but until then, I think it's best to just leave it in balance mode as it will be completely fine for CPU workloads as well as for gaming. So let's see the internals. Now the fans are very easy to clean, the battery is easy to replace, and you can also replace the Wi-Fi chip if you want to, although it is a Wi-Fi 6 chip so you won't need to replace it at least for a couple of years. The memory can be upgraded as well, there is uh, no soldered nonsense here, you can easily go up to 64 gigabytes if you really want to. You can replace the original SSD and you can add a second 2.5 inch drive if you like. Now, some versions of the GL65 will ship with a mechanical drive in that position, but you can just upgrade that to an SSD instead if you want to. I do think MSI should consider making 1TB SSD standard in the mid and high end segment, especially with some games being so large these days. I mean, in some regions, like here in the Netherlands, you literally cannot buy one of these laptops with anything else than a 500 gig SSD, which does feel a bit weak, but again, if you want to, you can upgrade it yourself with some cheap storage. 
Now you may have noticed that the battery looks quite small. It is a 51 watt hour battery, but surprisingly the battery life is actually not that bad. It ended up doing around four hours of productivity and five hours and 43 minutes of Netflix watching. And uh, if you just stick to only browsing the internet or just typing, you will get a bit over six hours. I would say it's not as impressive as some of the Ryzen based models like the Tough Gaming A15, but it's really not a bad result. Now, the funny part of MSI's marketing uh, is that they say it has giant speakers which aren't particularly large or that amazing. I mean, they're okay, there is enough volume and it is reasonably fine for a laptop, but I wouldn't really call them anything else but average. If you're looking for some reliable and fast external storage, SSDs are the way to go. It doesn't matter if you're just gonna use them to copy some files, to work from them, for example, or to keep your games on. They're just such a useful tool to have. Now the webcam is a fairly typical 720p webcam. Again, nothing special, but it will get the job done for the occasional meeting, which I pretty much think is more than enough. And I think that covers all of it. Like I said at the start, the GL65 is a mid-range laptop and my experience with it completely fits that positioning. Now the main downside to consider is the fact that this 120 Hz display just isn't that great. I mean, it's gonna be fine for school or casual gaming, but that's pretty much it. Now thankfully, the 144 Hz version should be much better. Just double check the specs before you buy anything to make sure it mentions a low response time or at least a good sRGB color gamut. Now alternatively, you can look into 144Hz GP65 instead, which should only come with good displays and generally slightly better specs, but then at a slight price premium. Now aside from this display choice confusion, uh, you do get a really decent gaming laptop with a good keyboard, with nice upgradability, and you do actually get more gaming performance out of this RTX 2060 than most others in this price class. So, if you don't mind your laptop being a bit thicker and a bit louder and you don't want to spend more on something a bit more fancy like a GS66, the GL65 Leopard is definitely worth checking out. Now that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel to never miss a new one. Bye guys.